thank you everyone for joining uh, my talk. It will be about optimizing motion parameters in simulation. And uh, actually we heard already a little bit uh, just in the talk from the team CIT brains about uh, optimizing parameters and the new bots yesterday also talked a little bit about it. Uh, but uh, I, I hope that I can get a little bit more into detail and we have been doing this for quite some time now. Okay, so, so why should we care about this topic? So many approaches that we have in um, robotics, um, especially in motions, have some kind of parameters or hyperparameters. And of course, we can tune those manually, um, and humans are quite okay in doing this. Um, but obviously, this is a huge waste of time that we could spend more productively in something nicer and actual research. Um, and it is, of course, annoying and boring, at least for me. And um, one of the yeah, biggest downside, so to say, is also it kind of uh, hinders you or deters you from making changes to your robot. So for example, making hardware changes to your robot, um, you don't like to do this because then you need to retune your walk parameters or something like this. So this is really something that hinders development uh, because nobody wants to change something um, as it is extra work. Um, and often the solution that we find as humans is also not optimal because we are tending to optimize to a local maximum um, as we are yeah, humans and we, this is just how we work basically. Okay, so the solution for this is to have some kind of automatic optimization approach. And this is what I wanna to talk today about. Um, so we will start with a very quick introduction to optimization. Um, but very high level. Um, I will not go into mathematical details. It's more, my goal is more to show you how you can apply this. Um, and then uh, I will introduce you to the Optuna library, which we use for optimization and which I think is uh, very well suited um, for us and other RoboCraft teams. Um, and then we have three application scenarios um, where we will have a look uh, on first is walking, the second is standing up motions, and the third one is kicks. Um, so basically the three big motions that all of the RoboCup Humanoid League teams um, need to solve. And yeah, and then we will have a short conclusion at the end. Um, okay, so very quick introduction to optimization. Um, the general idea in optimization is always to find some kind of parameters which minimize or maximize an objective um, that then depends on how you define it, but you want to find some kind of optimal parameter set. Um, and to do this, uh, you typically use some kind of previous data. So you try out one set of parameters, you see how it works and um, use then later on this information that you have already gathered about previous um, parameter sets to find new ones. There are different approaches on how, uh, how you can do this. You can do this with evolutionary approaches, for example, we already heard it in the last talks, um, or with a basin optimization. Um, I will here explain as an example, um, a more basin optimization um, approach, um, the tree structured Parson estimator or TPE. Um, but um, yeah, basically the general idea is the same. And um, although the algorithms solve the problem differently, the problem itself stays the same. So, so what we do with a tree structured Parson estimator is um, we build some kind of surrogate model. So what you can see here on in this image is a very simple case where we would have just one parameter um, that would be the x axis, the parameter, and um, for this parameter, we can define some kind of objective value. This objective value just defines how good this parameter is. So for example, in walking, it would be how fast is the robot walking In kicking, how fast can the robot kick? And then we can start, so, or, so we have some kind of true relationship between these parameters and uh, between this one parameter and how, how well our approach performs. This is this red dashed line here. But of course we don't know this um, because we cannot know this. The only thing that we can do is we can do evaluation. So we can try out just one parameter here, for example, 
and then we know what objective value it has. So we let our robot walk a little bit or we let it kick and then we know how well it performs. And then uh, we can do this here too. And then we can assume that this change is not uh, so drastically. And then we can assume that uh, parameters um, which are in a non-explored region are somewhere in this gray area. And we can then uh, do further experiments by trying out more parameters and we choose those depending on where we think um, a global optimum um, could be. And the more parameters we try out, uh, the better our surrogate model comes to the real truth um, relationship between the parameter value and the objective value. Um, of course, this is very simple in a one-dimensional case, but typically we have not just one parameter, um, but quite a lot of those. And this obviously comes with the curse of dimensionality. So um, finding out, uh, like optimizing these parameters in a high dimensional space. So if you have a lot of different parameters is uh, much harder um, and it grows in complexity with each parameter that comes um, additionally to it. Um, in this case, I said we have just one objective value. So for example, how fast the robot can walk. Uh, very often we have actually multiple objective values. So for example, in a walking, we don't just want to walk forward, we also want to walk sidewards. Or for a kick, we don't just want to have a very strong kick, but we want to also have a kick which goes in the correct direction. Um, this is then called multi-objective uh, optimization. Um, and there are uh, different approaches which can solve this too. So for example, the multi-objective tree structure Parson estimator but also um, other um, approaches. Okay, so um, the, we use for all our optimization the Optuna library. That's something we don't wrote ourselves at all. We just use it. It's an open source library uh, for parameter optimization. Um, and in my opinion, it is very simple to use and well documented. Um, and it structures this optimization problem quite nicely. So in Optuna, you have a study and this study basically describes an optimization and it consists of multiple trials. So a trial is always that you um, have a set of parameters and you try this parameter set out and find out what is the objective value of this parameter set. Um, and these, um, so somehow we need to decide on which parameters we want to try. For this, there are different samplers implemented. So for example, trees, the tree structure Parson estimator, TPE, would be one sampler but there are other ones um, as listed below. Um, so basically all the yeah, most typically used and best performing algorithms are implemented in this library. And this is also nice because you can easily compare different um, algorithms um, for parameter optimization with each other. Of course, you have to do a little bit uh, coding on your own. So what you need to program is basically just a function uh, which takes in a set of parameters given to you by this optimization process and returns the objective value or the objective values um, for this parameter set. So basically you try it out in robot simulation and measure how fast the robot was and return this value back to the library. And um, one especially nice thing is that you can do this in a distributed fashion uh, via an SQL database. That means you cannot just run one optimization process at a time, but you can run a dozen or 50 uh, processes on multiple machines, as long as those are all connected uh, or have all access to the same SQL database, um, you can have a very high degree of parallelization in there, um, which is very nice because um, this optimization can take quite some long time. Okay, so uh, let's first um, look at the first application, um, our walk engine. Um, so this is a very abstract overview on how our walk works. Um, it's based on the uh, walking from Team Roban, but we modified it heavily. Um, the general idea is that we have some um, pattern generator in Cartesian space. So this is this a spline engine here, which has some kind of engine parameters I will come to in a second. And those describe how the, uh, the moving foot of the robot is 
moving and how the torso is moving based in re relation to the supporting foot while, while the walk. Um, additionally, we have some stabilization methods. So first, we have some PID controllers, which modify the Cartesian poses. As I said, everything is in Cartesian space. So the spline engine provides Cartesian poses. We can modify those um, based on our IMU data. And additionally, we do modulations of the face. So based on the foot sensors and optionally the joint effort values to, um, to stop a step earlier or prolong a step if the foot has not made contact to the ground yet. And if the road gets too unstable, we can also completely stop for a second. So this is a general idea. What we want to optimize now are those engine parameters here. We don't need to optimize the stabilization parameters uh, automatically because there are um, well-established methods to tune PID parameters. Um, so I will only talk about those engine parameters. And actually, we have 12 of those parameters that we want to optimize. Um, and this is a general idea on what those parameters are. So this is kind of a view from top um, where you have the support foot here and the next step pose there. And some of those, this pose is defined by the uh, velocity that we want to walk in forward, sideward, and um, turning direction. And then we have a couple of more parameters um, that describe, for example, how far are the put our distance from each other? Um, how is the torso center offset from the center position between the steps? Um, and so on. We don't need to go into detail on each of those parameters. It's just to give you a general idea of, on what are we actually optimizing here. Other parameters are, for example, how high is the torso, um, how long is the double support phase, and so on. How 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 rise uh, how far do we rise our foot, or how much do we move our torso up and down during walking? And all those orange uh, values basically are what we are optimizing now. And those are 12 parameters. That's quite a good number. That's still something that we can optimize quite well without issues with this curse of dimensionality, at least in, in my experience up to now. OK, so what's now our objective? Um, our objective is here the maximal speed that we can reach by walking forward, backward, sideward, and turning. Um, so we found out that um, turning in left or right and walking sideward left or right is very identical for the parameters and not needed to test both directions. But for forward um, walking, we also need to test backward walking because um, there are differences in the parameters. Yeah, and the process is quite simple. We iterate basically through those four directions. Um, and then for each direction, we will continuously increase um, the speed that we walk with. Then we try out the walking for 10 seconds. This includes starting and stopping the robot. And uh, we do this until the robot falls down or it does not manage to go uh, um, faster. And then we find out what the maximum speed is that we have reached uh, in this direction. Um, yeah, so we compared different samplers for this. Um, I will just mention this briefly. So we tried out different samplers. Um, so we tried out multiple objective tree structure parsing estimator, and also the single objective tree structure parsing estimator. So you can always make a multi-objective optimization problem to a single objective optimization problem by scalarization. That means you basically just um, combine all objective values by adding them up together, maybe with some weights to one value. Um, and this works too, but it has some downsides in optimization itself. Um, then we also tested CMA, ES, and NSGA2 um, to also very famous um, evolutionary algorithms, and um, also compared this to a baseline of random sampling. And those where we tried 1,000 uh, samples each. Um, and you can see already the random sampling is uh, much uh, worse uh, than the other ones, even if you give them 10,000 trials. Um, TPE and MoTPE are quite quite well. So here we tried with three different robots, our Wolfgang OP robot, the OP3 from Robotis, 
and the best robot from Utra. So we had wanted to have three very different robots. That's why we chose them. Um, yeah, but the most of them are not such a big difference. Um, especially the different variants of uh, TPE and multi-objective TPE. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I would recommend to use uh, multi-PE personally. Um, in the end, we used a combination um, of multivariate, uh, multi-PE and multi-PE. Um, multivariate, multi-PE is a different kind of flavor of uh, multi-PE, which um, has a bit more of kind of exploration in there. So it does not fine tune so much uh, on some found parameters, but tries to more equally explore um, the, the space of parameters. So you can see it here a, a bit in this um, plot uh, that this, so on the left is a multivariant version uh, that there are a lot of um, dots quite um, distributed. So each dot is one trial. The color, the darker, the later the trial was done in the optimization process. So it tries out quite uniformly um, the, the parameter space, while the normal multi PE version really focuses on good parameters that it has, had, has already found. And you can see that this is less uniform. So why is now this good to have this uh, more uniform distribution. Um, it prevents you a little bit more from running into local optima um, or local maxima or minima. And the other thing is that our the time that the optimization process takes uh, is really depends on how good those parameters are that you're trying out. Because as we saw here, our process is this while loop and if you put in a really bad parameter set, you will be instantly finished, basically, while a good parameter set takes a lot of time um, because you do this 10 times or 20 times. Um, so if you always test very similar parameters again and again, it takes much longer. So random optimization is obviously the fastest because you test a lot of really, really bad parameters, but multivariant um, OTPE is still very fast, but still provides you a very good solution. But the best solution is uh, provided by TPE. So what we did in the end was combining both first searching with multi uh, with multivariant OTPE to uh, to get fastly a good um, idea of the parameter space and basically do the fine tuning with normal uh, OTPE. Yeah, and how does it look like? It's um, really um, simple. So as I said, the robot just tries to walk. Most parameters will fail in the beginning. Um, and I think there will be one parameter which works a little bit now. So the robot does some a few steps and will stop and then try it out with a higher um, speed. And you can see already here four simulations working at the same time, um, but you can do even more. Yeah, and um, the, res the result um, I can maybe show also here. Um, we tested this not only on our own robot, but on all robots of the league and some standard robots where the models were available in, in Rebots. Um, and as I said, we have this all the, this walking in Cartesian space. So um, it is easy for us to transfer this on different robot models, um, except the ganking Kuhn from CIT brains because it has uh, a parallel kinematics. And as we use ROS, uh, we cannot use parallel kinematics. Um, but all other robots work uh, in all direction, um, of course, with different speeds. So the best robot is the slowest, but it's also the smallest. Um, while the Karen robot from MRL is quite well, but our own robot is also quite fast. Um, yes, so this. Um, I also link, I also have a link for the full video if you want to, but as I don't have so much time, I will go quickly through this. Um, we use this walking also in the competitions um, that you can uh, have already seen in our competitions um, and in simulation that this works very well. We also used it previously in a different competition, the so-called running robot competition, 
uh, on a Darwin OP. Um, this worked also um, quite well. And we also modified our walking to be able to um, climb stairs. Um, so this is also quite easily doable as we have this Quintix lines in Cartesian space. But the, the full video is linked at the end um, if you want to have a look. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, when we tried the, to do this on the real robot, um, there are a few issues. So mostly um, one parameter, the pitch, so how the robot is pitched forward um, typically needs to be changed. Um, probably there is an incorrectness in our model, but generally those are quite close to working and it's much faster to just fix this than manually tune the parameters from the start. Um, and it's also far, not just faster, but it actually leads to better parameters than the manual tuning. As I said, humans tend to run into local maximums. Okay, we did um, a very similar approach with our stand-up. So the stand-up motion is also very similar as I explained the walking. It's also with Quintic splines, um, but here we describe foot and hand movements in relation to the robot base. And we have a front movement and a, uh, so standing up from the front and from the back. Um, those have uh, nine timing parameters and six pose parameters for front and uh, for the back it's six timing parameters and nine pose parameters. And we tried out different objectives for this one. So a success rate, um, the total time uh, that the stand up needs to do, um, the minimal reach pitch um, and the maximal reached height during a, um, a stand-up. And the idea of those lower two is that for a stand-up motion, you it's really hard to get it completed com correctly um, directly with a random parameter set. So this two should give kind of an kind of a gradient for the optimization algorithm to, to show in which direction it needs to um, optimize the parameters. And we tried this by doing it three times um, for one parameter set and front and back are optimized independently. And we tried this also with different samplers and with different combinations of these objectives. And for the stand up, we also found out that MoTPE performed best uh, for our case. And um, especially the combination of the success rate, the time and the maximal reached height um, of the robot performed uh, as in the forefront and for mean, uh, for, for front and for back in the mean case, but also in the worst case, the best. So the more it is to the left bottom, it's better. Um, the x axis is the time that it, that the stand up takes, and uh, TTS means trial till success. So how many trials the optimization uh, needed till it first managed to actually stand up. Um, so as well as the speed of, opt uh, of the optimization as also the final result, um, this MoTPE with the success time and height um, objective was the best. Yeah, this is um, just to show you how this um, stand up looks like. So we have different phases and then we have here um, an exemplary um, showing the um, splines for the arm and for the leg. Um, yeah, you don't need to look into detail. It's just to kind of give you an idea how those splines look in the end. Yeah, we also tried to do this on the real um, robot and um, we did um, three optimization runs for each of the objective functions um, that I had defined on the slide before. So we ended up with 12 parameter sets that we then tried out on the real robot. And for the front, two of those were actually directly working on the robot. Five uh, required just minor uh, changes, mostly making one of the phases a bit slower. And five of those were not directly usable. For the back, none were directly working. Six uh, of those were um, with just one change. Um, usable and six were not as not easily applicable. Um, I have to say that we did this um, a while back while we when we did not have the robot simulation yet, we did it in PyBullet, 
with a not as um, realistic model as we have now. So my hope is that actually with our new model, this could be better. Um, yeah, and we can see here in the plot the comparison um, between our um, previous approaches. So our, originally, we once had a keyframe-based um, animation. Um, th those was much, um, yeah, it took way longer and had a lower success rate. Then we had this spline-based approach that I presented, but with manual tuned parameters, which was already faster um, and more successful than our previous keyframe approach. And then we optimized the, these parameters uh, with the presented optimization approach. And um, you, you can see here the result on the real robot and here the uh, simulation results. So in simulation, we outperformed our manual uh, parameters in time and in success rate. On the real robot, we outperformed it in time, but not in success rate. Um, but still, um, at least in simulation, this uh, optimization works very well. And as I said, I hope our new model would also improve this sim to real transfer. And yeah, I have a short video for this too. Um, so first you will see our previous approach with the keyframe animation, which took a little bit of more time. And you can see the time here in the corner. Um, and then the manually chosen uh, parameters, but with our print explain approach already. So this is faster. It's also faster because we have stabilization in there then, which you can also see a little bit here. Um, yeah, and then we see our um, learned parameters here, which are extremely fast, I would say. Um, I think this is really very close to the optimum that the robot is able to perform. And yeah, we tried this also on some different robots. Back then we did not have all those nice models. So we only did it on the Roban robot and the Darwin OP and Pi Bullet. And the robot worked in both directions, Darwin only in one. Um, this was due to joint limits uh, of the Darwin robot. Yeah. Um, and then finally, um, we also tried this out on the kick. Uh, here, I don't have the video, unfortunately. Um, the idea here is um, also that we want to kick the ball in different directions. Um, and we have six, and basically the kick is similarly done again with Quintix blinds describing the foot and torso movement based to the support foot. And we have 16 parameters here that we optimize. Um, and we have four objectives that we use um, if the robot has fallen down after the kick, or if it could stand still afterwards, the time that it took to do the kick, the maximum velocity that the ball reached, and the angle between the direction that we requested and the actual direction of the kick. And the process was just to try the kick in five different uh, directions, as you can say, see here. Um, and yeah, I, I unfortunately don't have a video from it, but we also did this um, with our robot. Um, and it also worked, um, at least in simulation, very well. We did not. Um, um, yeah, not investigate so much into depth um, the sim to real transfer of, uh, of this kick. Yeah, so if you have basically this was the talk, so we saw basically three uh, different applications of the same approach of optimizing parameters for, for motions. And if you have any questions, um, those are very welcome. Um, and you can find more um, information. Um, on this web pages here, there's also a longer version of on the video. Um, yeah, so thanks for listening and uh, I will now answer questions. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Yeah, well, uh, a couple. Thanks, Mark. Um, I'm working on optimization of the new gifts robot myself for uh, a project for my degree. And we're using the NSGA2 algorithm. Um, I noticed that on your recording of our robot, that when you're telling it to walk straight, it had a turn in it. It was starting to turn off to the right. I've had the same problem. Did you have experience that problem, or did you try and put 
Then it catches in the penalise it for not walking in the straight direction you requested. Mm -hmm. um, yes, some of those robots uh, work walk not perfectly. I can you see how he's doing it. Mine does that nearly all the time. Yeah, I'll put a catch um, in it now. If you're going to do that, you're going to get penalised. Yeah. Um, so I also tried out different objectives um, in my work where I penalized, for example, walking to a wrong direction. The problem is then that the number of objectives gets higher because then you Get have higher, not yeah. four, but you have like eight objectives. And this decreases, at least for MoTB, I think I did not try it with NSGA2. Um, it, it, it takes much more time for the algorithm than to choose a new parameter set because uh, the number okay. of objectives uh, increases the time that it needs to yeah, compute a new parameter set. That makes um, sense. And, the, the sims take days to run. <laughs> yeah. I only can do it on one computer. Yeah. Um, so even with our distribution approach, it took then much more time. Um, and as those um, errors were quite small and are in the game really compensated by our path planning basically automatically, we, um, we uh, just kept it like this. Um, okay. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Okay, we have time for one more quick question. Then I have one. Are you making the parameters of all the other teams available as well for them to use? Yes, those are already uh, under the link here at the end. I, I've, I made a small page actually where you can find the video and all the parameters and all the code and actually even some explanation on how to install and run this code, which I hope works. If not, you can, if there are some issues, just write me a message, I will gladly help. I actually handed in this uh, walking code as a paper for the symposium on the development track, um, together with the baselines that I reached with the walking. Um, so I'm really glad if somebody uses this, I'm, I'm glad that Nubots already uses the walking as I heard. Um, and, but if you have any issues, just write me, I'm glad to help. 